Dear friends, well, here I am again, fresh back from my holiday for another edition of Friday Focus, the weekly roundup of the church news. We were so fortunate to have booked a holiday cottage in Porthcothan, which is one of our favourite parts of Cornwall, and here is the mug to prove it, uh, well before lockdown started, uh, because it was almost completely impossible to find um, holiday accommodation after the restrictions were lifted. But we had a wonderful break, and I am so grateful to the staff team and all the um, other people who made it possible for me to get away especially those who led services, preached and did the weekly updates. Thank you to all of you who have completed the online survey. We're still analysing the results, but there's been an overwhelmingly positive response to all that the church has been doing during lockdown. And again, I must thank the staff team and the armoury of pastoral carers and small group leaders who have made sure that the church family has been spiritually fed, cared for and supported. One of the most popular features of lockdown that emerged from the survey has been the daily updates. So by popular demand, I'm going to continue to produce an update on Monday and Wednesday and a Friday focus. Now, the response as to whether we should return to meeting for services at St Matt's was much more mixed. About two thirds of you said that you would like to come back, but about one third said that you wouldn't. So we're going to proceed slowly and we're going to start with the 6.30 service meeting at St Matt's from the 6th of September, while still live streaming it on YouTube. The 10 o'clock service is much more complicated because it's bigger, it's more difficult to socially distance, and we're gonna to have to work out how children can meet safely and within the guidelines. So for this service, we're going to begin to live stream without a congregation sometime in September and not meet with a congregation until we have worked out all the technical and safety issues. <coughs> The 11 o'clock service at the Minster, the communion service, continues to be well attended by about 40 people each Sunday. So do come along to that if you'd like to. Just remember that you will need to wear a mask and stick to the social distancing guidelines, which will be clear when you arrive. And the same person is preaching at both 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock. On Monday, we're interviewing for a part-time assistant youth worker to work alongside Simon until Annie returns from maternity leave and then with Annie when she returns part-time. Please pray that we make a wise appointment. I'm really sorry that we haven't been able to announce who our new operations manager is yet. That's because we're still waiting for the safeguarding checks to come through, but I will let you know as soon as they do. Towards the end of my holiday, I was reading Daniel in my daily Bible readings. I was very struck by the faith of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, who, as they were about to be thrown into the fiery furnace for refusing to worship the golden statue of King Nebuchadnezzar, said this to him. If we're thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. What a brilliant example of faith. They're entirely confident of God's ability to save them. He is able to deliver us, they say. But they're also entirely submissive to God's will, even if he doesn't. And they're utterly committed to worshipping him alone. We will not serve your gods. I found myself praying that the Lord would deliver us and the world from COVID-19 infection, but trusting that even if he doesn't, I will continue to worship him and trust him for the future. May you do the same. God bless you today.